What's up, Athena fam? Welcome to the last video of the Precision Irrigation Strategy Series. My name is Jay O'Keel, Facility Advisor for Athena. In this final video, we will cover our runoff procedure, sensor placement, and a few tips to dial in your irrigation strategy. Most of our decisions for irrigation strategy are made from data collected from our substrate sensors, but collecting runoff is also helpful. We can verify that we're achieving the correct volume of runoff and that our EC and pH values are within the correct ranges. Properly collecting runoff is crucial to making the correct changes to our irrigation strategy throughout the growth cycle. Now let's get into our runoff procedure. At the beginning of a lights on period before P1 irrigation events begin, select two to three plants within the irrigation zone that are of average size and in different areas of the zone. This will give the best representation of the average runoff for plants within the zone. Place each selected plant on top of a clone tray with insert. This will allow the plants to freely drain into the tray without sitting in runoff. Allow P1 and P2 irrigation phases to run as normal. Collect runoff from each tray immediately after the P2 irrigation phase ends to avoid loss due to evaporation. Measure the volume of runoff in a graduate cylinder. Using a calibrated EC and pH meter, test runoff EC and pH. Compare runoff EC to substrate EC on substrate sensor to validate accuracy of substrate sensor. Runoff EC tends to be slightly lower than substrate EC. Refer to the runoff and substrate EC ranges chart in the precision irrigation strategy procedure and adjust irrigation events accordingly to keep substrate EC within the correct ranges on growth stage. Based on runoff pH, adjust input nutrient solution to keep substrate pH within the correct ranges. Note, the pH should be slightly higher in runoff than the input solution to indicate a healthy developing plant. A lower runoff pH indicates that a plant is having problems using nutrients within the root zone. A lower pH usually occurs when a root zone is overwatered and roots begin to rot. When planning an irrigation strategy for a full irrigation zone, your sensor needs to be placed in a plant that best represents the entire zone as a whole. This is because plants positioned in different areas within an irrigation zone experience different rates of dryback due to variations in environmental variables such as temperature and airflow. For larger irrigation zones, it may be necessary to utilize multiple sensors to gather an accurate representation of the irrigation zone as a whole. This infographic shows the variances in BWC percent that can be seen in different areas of the irrigation zone based on environmental factors within a grow room. You can see the plants that are positioned along the aisle of the irrigation zone tend to dry out more quickly than plants in the center of the zone. Also, plants that are positioned in front of a fan will be exposed to more airflow, which will cause them to dry out more quickly. Be sure to keep these principles in mind when selecting the correct plant for sensor placement. Be sure to check our Precision Irrigation Strategy Calculator on our website to help you plan your irrigation events. To cap off our series on irrigation strategy, let's go over a few additional tips that will help when dialing in your irrigation strategy. Number one, it's helpful to know the volume of water we are irrigating in a day. In your irrigation zone, add an extra set of emitters in a pitcher to measure your shot volume throughout the day. Number two, sometimes the EC of our runoff can be too high for our meters to measure. If you get an outer range reading when checking your runoff, first be sure that your meter is calibrated. If you are still getting out of range reading, mix your runoff with equal amounts of reverse osmosis water and check the EC. Now take that reading and multiply by two to get your correct reading for your runoff EC. Number three, Throughout the growth cycle, our fuel capacity tends to decrease because our roots grow into our substrate and take up space. The substrate is unable to hold as much water at this point. Run your irrigation events and watch your plant that contains the substrate sensor, and as soon as you see runoff, mark your VWC percent. This will be your new benchmark to plan all your irrigation events from. I like to do this procedure at least once a week. That's it on our Precision Irrigation Strategy Series. Be sure to watch our other videos on the Athena YouTube channel for more videos on our top products and procedures to help you be successful in the garden. Also check out the We The Growers podcast where we bring perspective, best practices, and discuss the latest technology in the industry. 